Hi, this is Anne. I don't usually have my camera on when I'm doing these videos um, to explain how the work is going to go for a week, but because this is um, one of the first ones and um, I really wish this week we could be in a room together so I could look over your shoulder as you work and just make things easier for you. Um, I thought I would turn the camera on for a little while um, and introduce myself. Um, I'm at, um, so one thing I do have to explain is that there are a lot of pictures on the wall behind me, uh, many of which look like me, some of which are me, and I do not have an obsession with my own face. I'm at my mom's house in Tucson, and um, she has a wall of pictures of her family, of which somehow many of the ones that you can see are me. <laughs> so um, have patience this week. Have patience this semester. Have patience with yourself and with me. Ask lots of questions. Um, what I'm going to do today is what I call a screen share. And so I'm going to, pretty soon I'm going to turn the camera off and share um, one of my screens on my computer. And, um, and this is the same thing that we would do together if you were doing a screen share where I was watching you work. But we have lots of ways I can help you. So um, I'm going to talk about some of those. I'm going to talk about the code. I'm going to talk about things you can do wrong. And I'm sure I'm going to demonstrate some things that go wrong. Um, I don't have to pretend with that. Uh, as, as every one of you is every week, um, I have a lot going on. I don't have enough time. Um, I actually don't much care for making these videos, but I know that they, that they work for students. And so I'm always a little bit stressed when I start this. And I don't know. I, everybody uh, doesn't seem to type well when someone else is watching and you're all watching me. So um, I'm not, if I make mistakes while I go through this, um, I'll let you know if they're intentional. But the difference between mathematicians and programmers is mathematicians want to be right and programmers enjoy being wrong. If you can't have a sense of humor and um, like the search and the hunt for defects. It doesn't mean you can't be an effective programmer, but it means that's not the job for you for your life. So um, try to enjoy the journey, try to enjoy the mysteries as you create them and solve them. And um, I can pretty much guarantee from what I've heard from students along the way that every single one of you will have a few aha moments that make this semester work. So um, I'm going to um, share a screen and um, it's my other screen, so I have to make sure that I get the right one up. And I'm going to turn off my face because it distracts me and I don't want to distract either one of us while we go through this. Just need to find my controller, stop the video. Okay, so um, you should be seeing my screen too. Um, and uh, my cat Winston has generously shared his Replit account with me so that I can do this from the perspective of a student. Uh, my, my version of these things will look a little differently. So um, here's, here's our week two slides, and this is the task I'm going to walk you through. So um, particularly because this is not from the book. Um, so the first thing we have to do is fork the REPL and change the name to have a specific um, format. Um, I need each of you to have a unique name for each of your REPLs. Um, if anybody wonders why that is, you can ask me offline and I'll explain it. Um, and, and you want to do that much and test. So let's go over to, oh, so important. Winston, or me in Winston's guise, is already logged into his Replit account. This is only going to work right if you start by being logged into Replit. Then at the point when you, when you click this link, which is my version of the Replit, what happens is you're still logged in as you, okay, but you're looking at my version of the code. And when you fork it, you will make a copy in your account. So the instructions are open it up. Well, it doesn't say open it up, but anyway, you're supposed to fork this replit. So you click that link, the replit opens up, you push this button, okay? And now you'll see your name up here if you were logged in and the name of this project. And your first instruction is to change this to um, the original name plus the date, which is a new year. I'm still working on that. Um, 
two, three, and then it is, oh, it's almost seven o'clock. So we'll go, oh, 700. Um, I do use 24 hour time here. Um, that's going to make it a little bit easier for me to understand your working environment. Um, you don't push this button. That'll make yet another copy. Um, there's no save on this dialog. Um, basically, once you have typed in what you need to do here, you simply click off it. Okay. And you can see up here that you have, in fact, renamed your replit. Okay. So, um, we're not quite done. The first slide says run it. Okay. And so um, I have I have run the, the replit and it's showing up in this preview pane. Uh, I hope later in this video I'll explain the difference between the preview pane and a real browser window. But for this step, all you have to do is see the code, draw itself over here, and then click this and make sure this is working. And at that point, you have gotten, so that's what I mean by render. When the page draws in the, pre, in the result or preview pane, um, we say it has, the page has been rendered. So do ask about jargon. Um, I think, you know, whatever your um, job or sport or um, gaming environment, you have a set of jargon that you know on the inside of your head what you mean, um, and it's hard for you to imagine that other people don't. If I'm using jargon, ask about it. Um, if you ask about it in Slack in the first few weeks, you'll get a little extra credit, because I want to start um, getting you guys talking um, publicly in Slack so that you can help each other. Um, so bribery is always an option, um, and I bribe with um, extra, extra credit points, small amounts, but they add up. Um, so uh, let's be upfront about the bribery issue. Um, okay, so we have done the first part of this. Okay, and um, the second part, I'm not going to spend much time on this second slide, but I am super serious about it. Uh, you're going to think that you can't read the code because you couldn't write the code yet. And that's just so not true. Um, programmers read and change code all the time that they're in no way capable of generating it on their own. Um, we borrow code, we, we start with whole projects of code where we end up changing just a few lines here and there. And so one of the critical success factors of being a successful coder, and particularly, okay, I'm gonna say this again, particularly if you don't think you're gonna be a professional programmer, if you're taking this, um, in order to help other people, um, say you're a teacher, or in order to do data analysis, say you're um, a, you know, you're going to go into a program or you're a major in biology or something, and your major requires you to be able to code. I can guarantee that 90% of the time you're going to be taking a copy of existing code that does something and want to change it. And that probably the most um, important skill you can develop is a comfort with being able to read the code and formulate theories about what it does and how you could verify that you're understanding it. And um, so let's just take a real quick look at this. Um, this is one week where you're going to have all of the JavaScript code in the HTML file. So um, real quickly, this is a title that doesn't even show up yet. We'll see that later. This is um, this text is from down here. Um, and sometimes when you're getting used to a new environment and you're kind of nervous, it's nice to just do something that you know works and that gives you ownership. So you certainly have my permission to go up here and change the background color of this project from you know, something that, that um, you, from my, standard cornflower blue, which I happen to like, to something that you like better. So um, now if I hit run, having just simply gone to my style.css, which we will very rarely change in the course of our work, but you pretty much always will have permission to change background colors um, or text colors as long as everything stays legible. So um, we've changed that to gold. This other gold is, go this other gold is golden rod. So let's see how awful that looks. Okay, that looks fairly awful. Um, they will go for, I don't know, is there a light green? There might be a light green. 
yeah, there's a light green. Um, and if you're wondering where I'm getting these from, if you simply Google uh, CSS colors and always prefer W3 schools if you see a link for W3 schools and not Stack Overflow, just because W3 schools gives you simple information and Stack Overflow helps you helps you solve obscure problems that will take you off into a rat hole someplace. I use Stack Overflow all the time but I use it to solve hard problems. I use W3Schools all the time to solve simple problems. And there's a list of um, 141, 140, I thought it was 141. There's a list of 140 named colors. And um, again, choose, pick your cho choice as long as I can still read and it doesn't like get so glaring I can't see the page. Um, so here, if we go for light green and we hit run again, this page is, um, well, that's ugly to me, but you might like it. So let's leave that. Um, and this is what I mean by reading the code. Uh, you don't start up here and try to do a narrative. You look at things and try to figure out what each one does, okay? And so, for example, um, I don't see anything called hello text up here. But if I look here, I can see, see how this function call is get element by ID. And that is an ID. And this text matches that text. Okay. So we also should read our comments. In order to change the text on the page, we need to assign its web page element, meaning this thingy dingy up here, to a variable, meaning this thing here. Okay, so I'm not going to do this in any more gory detail, uh, but when I talk about reading code and reading comments, this is what I want you to do, is spend some time on the page and not just try to rush through and um, finish the assignment. Uh, that's kind of where madness lies because um, you really need to understand first and change second. So um, back to the slides. Uh, let's assume you've spent some time, um, and, and essentially you're going to be doing this all the time, but seriously, look at what's on the screen and don't just be darting around searching for little bits of text that you think might be the right place to, to type in a difference. Um, okay, so we want to change the text message that's displayed after the button is clicked to hello COSI 1010. All right, and I really am serious that the capitalization and punctuation matter. Um, JavaScript is case sensitive and is case sensitive. Um, JavaScript punctuation matters. It does for me when I tell you to do text. So let's look at the text that's displayed. That's, that's the ID. Uh, this, okay, so let me just click this verify. This hello world is what we want to change. And that is here. Okay. And I want to change it to hello cosi 1010. Let's see if I can get that typed in something like that. Okay. Now I've made one change. I'm going to test. Okay. I can, I, the biggest mistake new programmers make is to type in a lot of code and then expect it to run. You'll just completely be down a rabbit hole and not be able to fix it. Now, there's a skill you have to develop in trying to understand how little code you can write and, and actually get something to work that shows you that it, it's functioning. But for this time, we can test this change all by itself and we should. So now if I hit run, okay, and I hit click me, I see that that changed. Now, you're kind of unlikely to do that right the first time, and that may be silly because you just watched me do it and, um, and it seemed really simple. But a lot of times what's gonna happen is you're going to have maybe highlighted too much text, and you're gonna type this in like this, and that's gonna look right to you because your eye is not set up to look for these little quote marks yet, okay? And you're gonna hit run and click and nothing happens, okay? So how do you recover from something like this? You can double check your work, okay? You can control Z to get back 
to where the code was working, okay? You can always use Control Z or on a Mac Command Z to move your code back to where it was working. This is one of the advantages of trying to test after every small change is it's easy to get back to safety. Okay, um, but the other thing you can do, and I, let's just break this again. Okay, so I am intentionally breaking this. I'm not fat fingering it. Um, that's a slightly different break, but it should work the same way. Hit run. The page renders okay. If I just thought that testing was was seeing this page render, I would fool myself. Um, but if I click it, nothing replaces this. Now, there are a couple of things. Here in this Replit environment, as long as your code is simple enough, you actually get console messages here. So if I click this, okay, I see syntax error, unexpected token um, exclamation point. Now, by itself, that's not the world's um, the world's uh, most uh, helpful error message, but you did just change this line and it does have an exclamation point. And at this point, I basically have to um, hope that you have paid attention to the book and to this demo and that you know that strings in JavaScript have to be surrounded by quotes, okay? And at that point, you can run again Okay, we don't have any console messages, that's a good sign. And we go over here, and if I hit click me, that works. Okay, um, I don't know if there's any way to make this one not paint at all. So just remember that you haven't really tested this page until you've hit click me and seen the text change. Um, trying to think if there's anything else that really easy for you to break. This assignment doesn't have you change any attribution code in here. It, it, in the assignments where you have to change text in here, it is possible for you to break this page so thoroughly that it won't paint um, at all. So um, just be extremely careful that when you are changing text inside these, um, these tags, that you always leave the starting and ending tags in place, okay? And that you don't end up either erasing this or erasing that. So small changes, control Z to get back to safety, and, um, and just it's all details at this point. It's all gonna seem unfamiliar. Um, and I can't help that, you just need the practice. So um, what I can help with though, is if you do need, um, if you do need help, Okay, you have two ways that you can share this, this code. If you have a classmate and you wanna have them take a look at your code and be able to run it, you can actually share this link and somebody could, could look at it, okay? And then they won't be able to change it. They could just talk to you about it. If you have um, a collaborator in this class that you're working with and you trust them with your code and you want to be able to um, allow them to actually change code or you are trying to let me help you, okay, what you want to do is not send this link up here, but go to your invite multiplayer um, and use this link. So I don't want you making your public, your read write link publicly available to everybody in the class. Um, we all trust each other, but trust but verify. So if you need to send this link to me, please do it in a direct message within Slack instead of sending it in the public channel. Um, I really appreciate questions in the public channel. And then a question followed up by a link in the private channel is really the perfect combination for me. Um, if you only ask questions in, in the public channel, A, you don't get extra credit for it. And I'm sorry, I said that wrong. If you only ask questions in a private direct message, you don't get extra credit for it. And um, it makes extra work for me and it's slower. Um, but so if you can ask questions in the public channel, if you can feel comfortable doing that, then give me this link in the private channel. I can get to your work um, and I can leave you notes. Um, we could do a screen share like this where we're looking at your screen instead of my screen. Um, let's see. 
yeah, I guess I should explain. Even though you created your account inside my class, I simply don't have access to all your REPLs. And I can't guess the names of your REPLs or that read write link. So you have to send this link to me if you want me to leave notes in your code about how to fix a problem you can't solve. And I encourage you to do that. That's my job. Okay. Making slides is a piece of my job. Doing videos is a piece of my job. But helping you on your journey, helping you when you have a defect you can't figure out, that's the biggest part of my job. And I like, and it's the part I enjoy most. So um, even though it can take me a little while, and that's why you should start early and ask questions early, um, I really like looking at, at the um, things you come up with. I'm one of those people who likes dealing with thing, with code that's wrong. Um, it's an adventure for me, and I like to share that adventure with you. So um, the only other thing, I guess, I think I shared my whole screen. So um, I am going to just show you what it's like to um, do a screenshot. Um, let's see. Let's look at the slides again. Okay, so um, I haven't done this step, okay? This step requires that you look for um, the do something places in the code, read a comment, and change this three places. Um, that exercise is left up to the viewer, okay? Now, one thing we do want to do is we want, I want you to give me a screenshot of this code running in the, in a separate browser. So what that means is um, this preview tab works fine for testing this week, but as our code gets more and more complicated, this becomes less and less satisfactory. So it's really important that you know how to um, open this in a new tab. Now, you actually can just simply grab that, I think, go to a new tab, hit it, okay, and your page um, starts up. But simpler is simply to find this exit sign basically to open your code in a new tab okay and you'll note that it it doesn't make a copy of the state of the page as you ran it here it runs a fresh copy where we haven't hit the click me button yet um, if you are making changes in your REPL so for example um, I'm going to go back to style instead of changing the code anymore um, if I decide that I would like this to be light purple, and again, this is not a requirement. Um, you don't have to do that. Uh, maybe light purple is, I don't know, is there a magenta? I usually go with cornflower blue, but there you go. Um, so the IDE is being helpful here. If this word uh, identifies a, a reasonable color, you can see that. now. A lot of people start using hex colors because they start picking colors off here. I guess they don't really object to that, um, but in a lot of ways it's it's less simple. There are 140 named CSS colors and I encourage you to find a few that you like and just use those names. So you can go for these RGB colors um, if you're super picky about things, but I'm going to control Z and get back to um, magenta, which may not be too awful. Okay, now if I go over here to, that's pretty awful. If I go back, back here, nothing has changed automatically. Okay, I have to hit the refresh button to reload the current page. I just can't even look at that. Um, so I'm going to have to just for my own sanity come back here. Back to my, now this is like Google Docs. I really wish it wasn't but your, say, your changes are saved automatically. So simply having changed that to cornflower blue, the file state is saved and I can go here and hit refresh again, okay? Now, you certainly can hit this button every time and you'll get the same thing. Um, I kind of like have going back and forth and refreshing um, just so it doesn't open up a lot of tabs, but that's surely personal choice. Um, so let's see, um, right. The instructions want you to make a screenshot and I have a screenshot tool on my machine. Um, 
which um, most Windows machines have some sort of SNP tool these days, you probably need to um, Google your operating system, so Mac, Win7, Win10, um, and, and screenshot in order to get instructions for your machine. But basically on my machine, if I want to create, I've, I've got my SNP tool running, and I basically am just highlighting this, and I've asked you to show me Let's bring this guy over here. So now I have a screenshot of this, which is that title text we couldn't see in the preview, and this. And that actually, um, double checking my directions, which you really should do. Take a screenshot that shows the page with the modified greeting. Okay, well, I'm not necessarily gonna have that, and the title text. Um, but you need to do it after you've pushed the button. So I'm gonna go back here, push this button, Okay, I've got the modified text. I'm gonna go back to my SNP tool, which is off, sort of off screen, here it is, and um, just do that much of a screenshot. Okay, so now that's in my SNP tool. I, in order to upload it to REPL, I have to save it to a file. And let's see, let's just go to downloads. And I like to name things something that makes sense so I could find them later if I need to. And then week one, hello. Okay, so now I have that there. I'm gonna delete, I'm gonna get rid of the SNP tool and um, I have two options. Um, I think the easier one to demonstrate is if these three dots, I can upload a file. You also literally can drag and drop from whatever your file explorer is to here, but this um, is easier for you to see what's happening, I think. So if I upload the file, and um, on Windows, we've got this quick access feature, so I should be able to find that file here, upload it, and it simply comes into my Replit environment where it where I can see it when I grade. Um, you can preview it. There'll always be this scary message here. So, um, you know, it's a PNG file. It does not fail to load on the browser and it will click. So you don't have to do anything with that. I just need to see it. And I'm gonna be asking you to produce screenshots all the time. So master that skill this week, get it to be the easy part of doing your homework and make sure that you always understand exactly what the screenshot should show. Um, my SNP tool lets me um, circle things. I'm only circling things on my screenshot to make sure it's obvious what you need to show in your screenshot. Don't need purple circles from you guys. Um, I know this has been long. I hope it's been helpful. Um, and um, let me know if you need um, more uh, sessions like this. Um, I'll be producing vids from time to time, but I do take requests if people need anything. So in general, if you can identify things that you think I need a demo of, I will do my best to try and produce such said demo. Thanks.